Blessed by our service, and I hope you are all watching online or blessed by our service as well. Would you please stand and join with the praise team for the opening?
957. Is about 
dividing from others, but God, the Spirit, is about connecting people. It's so powerful, so powerful. Also, um, we've had uh, so many funerals this week. I know the uh, had a, a, a very gracious thank you card from the Ron Wright family that just said thank thank you so much, Melinda Christian Church, for all you've done for our family, and and uh, we just had a lot of different things going on and. Pray for the saints that are alive and the saints that are alive with the Lord. We have a saint that's alive with the Lord today that's having a birthday. We have a Jennifer. Jennifer, a birthday today? Prepare to go to the Lord in prayer. Let's sing the Lord's Prayer, page 
pray together. O oh, sovereign Lord, we don't always understand why things always work the way they do. But Lord, help us to understand that just as Jesus' hands brought healing and comfort and blessing and deliverance from all kinds of things that were destroying people's lives, so your hands are upon every life and every situation. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing among your people everywhere as you minister to them. Whether they feel like they're on the top of the mountain or at the bottom of the cliff, draw them close, draw them in, we pray. I thank you for bringing friends that we don't always get to see as much as we like back into our lives. I thank you for all the divine connections and the way you connect us to one another, to different people at different times. I thank you for the way, Lord, that you are continually going before us and with us and around us, and you're always ahead of us. Thank you for birthdays and new beginnings, anniversaries and celebrations of life. Lord, lead us to always be grateful and thankful in all that you are doing. Father, right now, we know that's only through your healing hands of love that you can take what's broken and care of and make her walk again, hold again in her body. Lord, more powerfully, I pray that you would make her whole in her emotions, in her spirit, in her relationships. And Lord, that you would lift her up just as Jesus has lifted up so many people who were lame, who could not walk, either by birth or by accident, it does not matter. I pray for grace and mercy in your comforting spirit for Erica Maple family. your healing grace and protection and mercy on the Blake Trimminger family. Lord, we continually pray for your healing mercy and hand to be upon Harriet Warren, Tom Weaver, Debbie's son Stephen. The Lord is even those that are watching online, whatever is heavy on their heart, whatever is joyful in their spirit, Lord, fill them with your abiding presence. That they may taste the sweetness of your spirit. That they may know the depths of your love in Christ. That you would lead us all to draw together in all the many ways you connect us by your Holy Spirit to grow in faith, hope, that we would digest your written word and that your living word who comes to us as a person Order our steps. Lead us in our praise and worship. Enter into us in holy communion. And fill this day with joy.
joy. And a resounding yes to all that you call us as your people, we pray.
I am. Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 58, Before Abraham, I am. The exact same words that Moses has said, this is God's holy name. Jews didn't even want to utter it. Well, they were ready to pick up stones and, and do Jesus in because he said, I am. Jesus says, I am in the Father and I am in you. And you are, I am. John chapter 6, where we're going to look at the first I am statement, Jesus says, I am the bread of life that comes from heaven. John chapter 8, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. John chapter 10, I am the door and the gateway for the sheep. Also in John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He satisfies us. John 10, 36, Jesus basically says, I am God's son. John chapter 11, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. After he just raised Lazarus from the dead, and he was looking towards his own resurrection from the dead, and as you and I follow Christ, that we look for our resurrection from the dead. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 15, I am the the true vine. We are the branches, and he what? He connects us all together to him. Where do we get our power? From the one who says, I am, and you're connected to the great I am. I remember almost there, middle school. <laughs> middle school. Big old sign in the cafeteria. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. And I realized there's there's some truth to that. I love the, the health food restaurant. They had a big billboard. It said, eat here, live a long life. Barbecue shack right next to them. Didn't want to be undone. They said, eat here and die happy. <laughs> I don't know about you. I've never met a pastor who doesn't love to eat. <laughs> and Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I will satisfy your deepest needs. I will give you deep inner spiritual strength. Matter of fact, he was born in Bethlehem, and Bethlehem literally means the house of bread. You know, I realize through Christ, that he says this. He says, I am the bread. comes from heaven. And they don't understand what Jesus is saying, and they're saying, well, what, we're supposed to eat your flesh, literally? And Jesus is talking to them about presence and power and love. And he says in John 6, 53, he says, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life 
in you. Why we take communion every Sunday? It's not only remembering what God in Christ has done for us on the cross and his resurrection and his ascension to the Father, but it's his empowering presence that wants to come into you, just like the Holy Spirit came into Mary with that mir miraculous conception of Jesus, so the Holy Spirit is, is to continue, we're to continue to be taking Christ in. Eating him. That's why the Bible also says when you when you take in God's word, you're, you're taking in God in some sense. That when you remember and and and, and know that God heals you through Jesus' death on the cross, that his that the very blood he gave, the sacrifice was that you would know that you are God's child and I am. When we do that, he gives us a fuller life inside. I have no idea how many men and women are in Jackson County Jail right now. I always know it's more than it should be. How many beds can they fit in that place, Jerry? I have no idea. <laughs> they just keep putting more and more beds. But I, I prayed for them when I said, when Christ gets a hold of your life, the, the great I am, he will give you freedom that whether you have bars around you or no bars, you can know what true freedom is. I know there's guys in jail that will say, they, they, they come into knowing Christ and God's presence so fully. <laughs> Joe? <Yep. laughs> so fully. That it just totally transforms their life. Look, let me say this. I'll, 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 I'll do this. I'll go to them and I'll go, you know, oh, Chris, I'm really, really struggling being here. I just lost everything. Would you pray for me? I'll pray for them. Six months later, they're saying, Chris, I'm so free on the inside, it doesn't matter whether I get out of jail or not. That's no longer the issue. Because we learn that we belong to God. That you belong to God. And Jesus, he comes and, and he calls us dear friends. He calls us dear friends. That, that as Christ's friend, that we can know his daddy intimately like Jesus knew his dad intimately. That because Jesus is the, the bread of life, I am. You got questions? Go to God. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. You got fears? The great I am, the, the bread of life, comes to relieve your fears. <coughs> doubts? We all entertain doubts, don't we? Preacher, have doubts? Oh, I'll tell you. Doubts can either drive you to God or away from God. For me, I love that. When I have a doubt, I'm going to study that. I'm going to pray about that. God, help me understand this, because I don't understand. And, and then I, when I see or hear or been shown the answer, my faith grows. Matter of fact, I'll say, I won't be so quick to doubt next time. Because doubts that just become a negative thing of faith can drive us farther and farther away. You belong to Christ. Christ calls you dear friend. He answers our questions. He relieves our fears. And, he, and even he entertains our doubts. He 
and gives us peace. That's what it means to be bread. Jesus is the bread that gives us life in God. You know the crazy thing is, I'm not going to go into it all, but if I read all these passages in John chapter 6, they couldn't get past literal bread. They couldn't get past bread as just something you eat. Couldn't wrap their brain around what it meant to eat Jesus. They could only think of bread as something that you take rather than someone who gives. Sounds a lot like me and you, don't it? <laughs> Sometimes we just can't see it. And because we can't see it, <laughs> the bread can be too hard to swallow. I can't swallow that. That's in the Bible, I can't swallow that. Instead of digging deeper into what God wants us to see in the difficulty of that. And so here we are, Holy Communion. And Jesus comes to give us new life, to die daily. And the early church, they partake partook of Holy Communion every day, some of them. Not all of them, but some of them. There's those of us that take it weekly, there's others that take it monthly, there's some that just take it yearly. But it's where we enter into Holy Communion with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Gospel of Luke. Chapter 22. Verse 19. It says this. Here's Jesus in that first communion. And he says, he took the bread. Catch this. He took the bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. And he gave it to them saying. Sometimes different translations translate the Bible a little differently, but... There's a sense in which this word here, when he says, he took the bread, it means he chose the bread. He could have chose something else, but he chose the bread. God could have used somebody else, but he chose you. He chooses us. And by choosing us, we say, the second one, we give thanks. Oh, God. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve nothing. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you thanks for choosing me. No, the Bible says before you ever thought about God, before you ever chose Christ, you were chosen. And then he says, he broke it. He broke it. Some of the people that we're praying for, they're broken. Some of you may be broken. And the truth be told, all of us are broken somewhere or are God has mended us somewhere because we have been broke. And that's why we enter into Holy Communion.
because we've all been broken. He didn't choose us all because, oh, you're the greatest people in the world. You're better than everybody else. No. He chose you and I because I'm weak. <laughs> I'm broken. I'm wounded. And God chooses the weak things to shame the wise because all we can do is give God the credit. And then it says, he gave them the bread. He gave them the bread. Jesus gave his life. He calls you and I to give our lives away. To one another. Who Jesus died for? Every one of us. Who do, we, who do you and I give our life to? Whoever's around us. Boy, Brother Joe had a wonderful week with him, and he was reminding me of a situation where he was worshiping. <laughs> we were in this big worship hall, and the guy next to Joe, he was what you call dancing <laughs> in his joyful glee. And it was just like he was all over the place, and Joe was like, I cannot worship. So he said, God, where do you want me to see this? Where do you want to see where do you want me seeing this? And God spoke to Joe's heart and said, Do you care more about yourself and your worship? Or do you care more about him and his worship? Joe just backed away and let that guy worship, and Joe just entered into a deeper worship himself. We give ourselves away to other people. Jesus gave his life. We're to give our away for us. We're to give our lives away to one another. And so we come to Holy Communion. Jennifer, go ahead and start the play. And as Jennifer plays, Lord. 
put in us greater faith, greater hope, greater love, and let us know that we are forgiven, that we forgive others, and oh, how this world would be so much more than it is today if we could simply forgive one another. singing Blessed Assurance, Jesus is love. Oh, what a foretaste of heaven's divine. Number 480. Let's all sing together. Blessed Assurance. Merciful Savior,
You have touched us today. Whenever you touch us, things are not supposed to be the same. It may be the same things around us, but everything in the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act is changed by the Master's touch. What seemed old is now new. What seemed forgotten has been reformed. And what was broken is now healed. Make our lives a prayer to you, Lord. That we would be living prayers as we go throughout this week. That people around us will know and see that we all are sons and daughters. Of the Father of life. Father of all, the Father of fathers, the Father of the fatherless. Lord, we gratefully give thanks for the more and the all that you are doing today, tomorrow, in the days to come. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 <clears throat>